How did the kid from your school die? Of all things, an unfortunate camping accident. This was before cell phones. Two friends went out for the weekend to a campground for some fishing over the weekend. When they didn't arrive home at the time they said they would, the parents called the provincial park to see if they were running a bit late, the weather wasn't great and the camp was about an hour away from town so it was entirely possible they decided to stay another night, and drive out in the morning instead. The park warden stumbled upon their campsite and found both of them dead in their shared tent. Turns out it was a cool night and they decided to run a small heater in the tent to be warm. But it was an old heater that didn't have a shut-off sensor built in. The heater ran all night while they were asleep, and since they didn't open the flaps on their tent for air circulation, because they wanted to trap the heat, the tent filled with carbon monoxide and suffocated them in their sleep. So sad. And a week before school too. Edit, wow, I didn't realize just how sadly common this was. R.I.P. to all who died. Playing along a fast-moving creek deep in the woods. First team gets pulled under really fast. Second one, immediately runs, and dives in to find him. A minute later, first team comes back up on the other side, exhausted but thankfully unhurt. Guy who went in to find him was not coming back up was in the days before cell phones. Had to run a good mile back up the trail, hop in the car, drive to the nearby park ranger office, East Texas big thicket area, and report slash get help, along with guide rescuers. Took about 30 minutes total to get back out there to the accident. Still no sign of him. Rescue workers found that under the higher waters were tons of plants slash tree debris everywhere. Two days of removal, while still trying to control fast-moving waters, his body was finally found. He had dived too deep, trying to find the first friend, getting trapped under the submerged branches, without enough energy or breath to fight against the current, to get out and back up. He was only 15. Grade 5. He was playing with his little brother, when they found their dad's duty pistol. Little brother shot him right between the eyes. Can't imagine how the little brother feels. Was about 50 years ago. Can't imagine how the dad felt either, no matter how well hidden it was, I imagine he blamed himself tremendously. That's sad. If it's not behind a lock and your kids can find it, it's not well hidden. Group of kids got skunk drunk and decided to take a ride down a notoriously winding road. One guy was standing in the back of the truck and fell out as they rounded one of the hairpin curves. Didn't make it. Kid in my school was bet $100 he couldn't chug a 26er of whiskey. Won the bet, died an hour later. I was watching Animal House with my dad when I was younger. We reached the scene where Belushi's character is introduced as he chugs a whole thing of liquor. My dad turned to me and said very seriously, never do that. You could die. Well, never did that. And as far as I can tell I'm not dead either. I'm two for two, dad. He was playing football and randomly passed out. Never woke up again. Something similar happened to a co-worker of mine. He was playing basketball and sat out a game complaining of a headache. Then he passed out and never woke again. He was barely 30. It was devastating. Happened on the soccer pitch next to ours when I was playing 5A side with my work buddies. Kid who looked late teens fell down hard, and didn't come back up again. They tried CPR and the defibrillator from the office, before the paramedics showed up. We just stood there speechless watching it go down. And while it looked super bad, they took him away on a stretcher still working on him, so I didn't actually find out he died until a week later when we were back for our usual slot and they held a silence. Never even found out the kid's name but I still think about it sometimes. Life can so be fragile. Kidnapped, graped and murdered by a serial pedo killer nicknamed, the man with the mask during school camp. We played together three days before. The killer had a spree over decades in different countries. Craziest part is, a soldier stationed close to the campsite, saw the man and my friend in a car, during a night run in the woods. 
Shortly after, the soldier was sent to Iraq. Years later after he returned, he heard about the case and remembered that night and the car model he saw. This clue led to the arrest, trial and sentence of a previous suspect. Autoerotic asphyxiation. Before the term was common knowledge. What they told us at the time was that he had hung himself. 1980. Peace out, Randy, sorry your brother had to find you that way. Fun fact, I got suspended for three days for an unexcused absence attending his funeral. Just didn't wake up one morning. His mum found him dead in his bed. Turned out he had some condition they had no way of knowing about. Can't imagine anything worse as a parent. Something similar, he was just eating his dinner and died. In my country, we have a big final exam that directly decides what course we get into. Every student your age in the country takes the exact same exam at the exact same time, everyone gets their results at the exact same time too. He just finished this exam, and his parents had to open up the results and see if he would have gotten his course two months after he died, I don't know if he did but still, this day should be a celebration but instead the government, hands them a piece of paper that tells them how bright his future was. Edit, I woke up to loads of speculation in the comments, but only one person got it right, I'm Irish, it's called the leaving cert. He and two friends were effing around with a shotgun, it was loaded and killed him. One of the friends the one holding the gun I believe, committed s a month or so later from the guilt. This happened with the popular senior at our high school. It was a house party and pretty much every kid there was drunk. He talked his girlfriend into aiming the shotgun at him and pulling the trigger, promising it was unloaded. His face and chest took the blast. She was f up for a very, very long time. His family went out of their way, to make sure that her rehabilitation and anything else she needed for help, was covered. His girlfriend broke up with him, he didn't take it well. One afternoon after school, he walked down to the primary school near our high school and shot himself in the head right outside the entrance. Didn't know him well, but I don't think he had all that many friends. He always had sad eyes, but was very nice whenever someone spoke to him. Same thing happened at my high school in the 80s. The principal ran out and covered the body with his own suit coat. My headmaster saw a pupil run over directly outside the school. The kid was stuck under the car. The headmaster single-handedly lifted the car enough for others to get the kids out from underneath. Not a massive car, but still superhuman strength in the moment. The boy survived. There was the one kid in elementary school who was riding his bike and got hit by a car. The school's infinite wisdom was to reiterate the dangers of not wearing your helmet while riding a bike. Fantastic memorial. There was the guy who drunk drove into a pole to avoid a squirrel, as the surviving passengers put it. But the hardest one to think about was my kindergarten classmate. She survived but her baby sister was killed in the Oklahoma City bombing. Someone died riding their bike to my old high school. The school flipped out and banned everyone from riding bikes, skateboards, or scooters to school. Literally confiscated my friend's skateboard out of his locker. Hit by a drunk driver while in a car with four people. Was ejected 30 feet from the back seat. Mans got up, walked to a burning car, actually ripped the door off, pulled out all three other people and dragged them 10 to 15 feet away, then collapsed. Succumbed to his injuries at the hospital later, apparently had a broken femur, collarbone, wrist and arm, amongst other things. The other three only had minor injuries, and the car exploded like 3 to 5 minutes after he pulled them out. Dude was actually a hero. No one saw any of this by the way. The drunk driver called the cops when he woke up. The cameras in front of the school caught most of it. An electrician screwed up rewiring her family's house, so a live wire was touching a metal pipe, connected to the bath. Her mum was wearing rubber work boots when she filled the bath, so wasn't electrocuted, but she must have accidentally brushed against the tap or gone to add some more water, while submerged, and was killed instantly. We lived in a very small town where everyone knew each other, so it really rocked our community. 
She was in the grade above me, so would have been around 10 to 11. She was in the fifth grade and needed a blood transfusion. Her parents were Jehovah's Witnesses and refused the procedure. I don't know what condition she had, but she died due to lack of medical care. Try making sense of that, at 11 years old. Massachusetts 1995. I do not give a crap about anyone's religious beliefs. Before 25 there should be zero religious beliefs legally allowed, to prevent any medical care. My parents just didn't want to take us to the doctor. It's neglect. Her parents murdered her. In the UK, doctors can technically provide treatment which is in the best interest of the child without the consent of the parent. They also use Gillick competence, which determines whether a child under the age of 16 is able to make their own informed decisions. Once the child has made that decision, and the doctors deem them Gillick competent, a parent cannot override that decision. The law sees parents as the primary person who should be making the decisions on behalf of their children. But the child isn't the possession of the parent. They are entitled to representation in their own best interests, and not in the interest of the parents. This is where we get court cases like Neon Roberts, mother wouldn't allow treatment for a brain tumor, and Charlie Guard, in this case the doctors wanted to remove life prolonging treatment slash equipment. Self-inflicted shotgun to the head. She was mercilessly bullied throughout school. Junior year of high school and it was too much. The school and diocese consistently turned blind eye to bullying, and other disciplinary complaints towards children from priority families. The priest had the audacity at the funeral to talk about the selfishness and sin of suicide. And nobody got up to punch the mother trucker? This was the 90s in middle America and in this community no one questioned the church. Glad I quickly moved on. This one guy at my high school tried asking out this girl. The girl's brother and a group of his friends jumped him, did some unspeakable things to him and the entire school found out about it. He was missing from school for months, because he was in the hospital. Eventually he came back to school, but people stared at him. It must have ate away at him, because during the summer, his family went on a cruise and the guy jumped off the cruise ship and drowned. As a parent at this point you effing move. Nothing could make me keep my child in that community after that. Wrestling team bully, with anger management issues, punched an elderly man in a road rage incident, and the elderly man shot him to dead, and was acquitted as it was deemed self-defense. Older student broke into the chemistry lab, joking around with his friends, sniffed some chemical that I can't remember. I was at my break and just heard the sirens. Damn do any chemists here, know what could kill you that instantaneously? A lot of things in a chemistry lab are bad for you to inhale much of. Why if you ever smell anything you waft it, not put your nose to the flask, among other reasons. Also why fume hoods are an absolute must on any chemistry lab. Some reactions and even some chemicals have to be handled inside of them. One time my professor, a brilliant neuroscientist who is also a moron, smelled partially diluted ammonia, by putting his nose over it and then said to me, don't smell that. I wasn't going to. In grade 11, a kid in my class died in a motorcycle accident. His cycle slipped, and he got hit head on, by a semi in front of his parents. He wasn't popular though, so when it happened, it was just a quick announcement at the start of class, and then life moved on. Several weeks later, a popular kid was drinking and driving, and was in a near fatal accident of his causing. That was a week long tragedy in the school, even the effing teachers joined in. FCHSS. Near fatal? So the guy who caused the accident didn't even die and the school still held memorial type services? Effectively, yes. They were offering counseling and let students leave class whenever they wanted. It was very disruptive, I had several classes interrupted, because some prima donna would start having some crying fit and storm out. Yeah that's f up. Meanwhile the actual life lost, just gets a throwaway line in the morning announcements. I'm sorry. In high school, a girl in the year ahead went missing. There were flyers posted for volunteers to help search for her. 
It was understood that she wasn't the type to run away. Her mom was out of her mind with worry. A few weeks later, her stepfather was arrested. It seems he'd essay her, and then switched from her to her little sister. She threatened to tell, and he murdered her. Then he drove her body out somewhere to dump it, with her little sister in the car. She was too traumatized to remember much. Apparently, he put her body in a dumpster, and it ended up in a landfill somewhere. They got a confession out of the guy by putting him in general population, and letting the other prisoners know what he was in for. He lasted less than two days. Her name was Debbie Moberg. He was kidnapped in 1989, and his body wasn't found until 2016. His mother went on to start, the Crimes Against Children Registration Act, in 1993. Jacob Wetterling. His case haunts me. 260 Z wrapped around a tree, 20 feet up in the air, after running off an embankment going over 100 miles per hour. Front and rear bumpers on passenger side were touching. They used two tow trucks to get the car to slide down the tree. Needless to say, closed casket funeral. In HS my friend crashed into a gas tank on the highway. Shit exploded and burned a whole section of an overpass. They only identified her by her teeth. Her brother posted on Facebook describing his mom's screams, and although I didn't hear them, I still think about that post. Was about 15 years ago. Drinking in a car with three friends and when the police came they fled, driving at a high rate of speed. They missed the turn when the road made a T, there was a massive tree directly behind the double arrow sign, and they wrapped the car around it. To make the situation worse, the police arrived and refused help, to the screaming teens until after they interrogated them. Three of the boys died and the fourth was in a body cast for six months, and in rehabilitation for years with permanent disabilities. The parents sued the police for not helping the boys and allowing them to bleed out. The parents won and the disabled boy has enough money to cover his care for the remainder of his life. The boys did break the law and were stupid, but for the police to tell them that they are going to allow them to die if they don't answer their questions, and then they died, was inexcusable on any level and they should have been charged not just fired. She made fun of a Cholo's, Latino gangbanger, nickname and he shot her in the face. It was a stupid nickname, and she was bitch to everyone constantly, but she was like 14 to 15, and she never got a chance to be better. In high school, girl who sat next to me for more than two years, we were seated in alphabetical order, went to a party one weekend senior year, got drunk and decided to walk home in the dark on nearby railroad tracks. Run over by a train and died. Her seat sat empty for the remainder of senior year. Almost 40 years later, and I still remember her name and exactly what she looked like, before the incident. One guy died on his birthday, he was getting chased by his friends for birthday beats, nothing really bad, just little roughhousing. So they are running around in the school all playfully, and he just collapsed and turned blue pretty quick. He apparently had some heart issue, that he was unaware, and his heart just stopped, I believe he was like 15 or something. Super sad. There was a boy from a family of alcoholics, parents divorced, he lived with a mom who was a very heavy drinker and a stepdad. Stepdad had a son who spent quite some time in mental facilities and rehab because he f up his brain with drug use. The son eventually came home to live with his father and my classmate. One time the classmate accidentally saw his stepbrother sniffing glue from a bag. Stepbrother got mad, poured kerosene on him and lit him up. When his mother saw her child was burning, she jumped out the window and ran away, while his younger siblings were trying to put out the fire. Unfortunately once they managed to, he was already dead. A girl got squished in the Carousel of Progress at Disneyland. It was a huge story at the time. It's still a huge story emo. I'm in my early 20s and even I've heard of it. Honestly keeps me up at night sometimes, can't imagine how it was to have known her. He froze to death in his sleep, after passing out in the snow. 
It was a school trip with his class and they had some beers, but probably some of the first few times they tried alcohol. It was devastating. They were moving from one house to another and he had said, he needed a break, in between, but everyone forgot or just thought he's in another house. It sounds like an obvious mistake, but it's not necessarily that cold even if it's snow especially after a drink. To lie down and chill on a snow pile with a good jacket is no problem, but if you pass out and forgotten, well damn. Friend from high school died his freshman year of college at a fraternity hazing. The frat was already banned from having any events on campus. So the hazing ritual was done off campus, at some house they rented off, Airbnb. Guy was a good man, always nice to others and had a great sense of humor. I don't think he had much experience with alcohol, cause he turned blue after the hazing, and was found unresponsive on a couch, some time later. His frat decided to quietly drop him off to the hospital and left him there all alone. He died about four days later in the hospital. He was hooked onto a bunch of machines and sadly didn't recover. The alcohol had done irreparable damage to his liver. His parents sued the university, but the courts ended up ruling in favor of the school. Aside from the legal battle, his parents lost their youngest child. That's never easy to process. Almost seven years later and I still think about him from time to time. I wanted to attend his funeral, which was on a Friday, but I had a final exam for my German class and couldn't reschedule it without rescheduling my summer break traveling plans. I regret not attending the funeral. It would have given some sort of closure, being with friends and having time to just be in each other's company. In high school, I had a friend that had a troubled family life. He was living with foster parents and ran away back to his family on the reserve, they were First Nations, Cree specifically. He got picked up by our equivalent of CPS and was being transported back to his foster family's house in town. While on the highway, he jumped out of the car while it was traveling at a low speed. He got hit by another car in the oncoming lane going, 100 km per hour. Looking back on it, 20 years later, it is still painful. He was such a good guy. It breaks my heart to think of how much he missed his family, and was willing to risk his life, to go back to them, despite the abuse, and drug use. He just didn't feel like he belonged in his foster family's house. They were decent people, just not his family. There was another kid I went to school with, but barely knew. She had a few disabilities and health issues. She passed from some kind of heart condition as far as I know. He was playing inside a cardboard box on an industrial wharf, when a truck backed over the box. Even at a young age, I felt very sorry for truck driver, he thought the box was moving because of the wind. Hung himself. I was really good friends with him, since maybe fifth grade but I knew him since kindergarten. We weren't talking that much for a bunch of ninth grade but we really started talking again, and then he died, I was doing multiple school projects with him at the time, but I ended up not having to do them. I was told by my crying mom and my dad was pretty much crying because of me having to deal with that. There were no clues or did he ever say anything about his thoughts. Before that year started though his mom told my mom that he's been having bad anxiety and maybe to not talk to him. He was happy to talk anyways. It was a big story and there were people from schools away who knew about it, and the classes I was with him in were pretty much pure sadness and crying. The English class was the worst though. I was crying with my head down on my desk but the co-teacher in that class comforted me. I worked with her until I graduated last year. God bless her soul. He and a small group of kids ditched class, and were riding around in the back of a pickup goofing off. The driver hit the gas, and he flipped out of the back of the truck, and landed on his head, breaking his neck. His mom was the 911 dispatcher that took the initial call. This will get buried, but it's traumatized me for as long as I can remember. When I was in kindergarten, a boy from my class was carrying a big glass jar, while walking down the stairs, I think it was for lightning bugs or something like that. He tripped halfway down and fell on top of the jar, piercing his heart and lungs. He was killed instantly. 
I never forgot him, and to this day I will never carry anything glass walking up and down the stairs. Quite a few kids I went to school with died, but one still sticks out to me the most. The older brother of a girl in my class, he was a couple years older, so we went to the same school. I live in the middle of nowhere and we have heavy snow for most of the year, so snowmobiling is a really popular recreational activity. Apparently this guy had crashed into a tree, and a branch went right through his head, and killed him instantly. There are a few. One kid when I was a junior and he was a sophomore, was riding a quad and didn't see a cable across the dirt path. I know a couple of his friends who were riding with him, apparently, he got almost completely decapitated. One of them was playing tennis and just dropped dead. He was part of a group that liked to experiment with ecstasy, and the thought is he took too much of it and it effed with his heart. Not sure if that is true or not but he was very popular and the whole school was pretty sad. I played baseball with him when I was younger, and my family was friends with his family, so it sucked a lot. One of my best friends was killed in a work accident after she graduated. I was a year behind her, and so was a lot of her friends, so that one hit our group really hard. Someone I went to school with got killed by police a few years ago. He was the dumbest person I had ever met but somehow still had all C's in school. Never once saw him do any school work in any of the classes we shared, he also happened to be the best athlete my school had ever seen, and still holds football records 15 years later. He was killed because he assaulted a bus driver. When the police arrived he started fighting them. They tried tasing him after trying to just take him down. They tried pepper spray after that, then they used batons. He took one of their batons from the cops and started hitting them with it, so they shot him. It led to the mayor, who was a distant relative of his, leading a protest against the cops. It was a clearly justified shooting, and there was video of the whole thing thanks to some people recording, who also happened to yell at the cops after because they were idiots. The guy that died was also a massive a-hole to me and my friends in school, but even we felt sort of bad for him. He was mentally ill from drugs and homeless, but his family acted like they loved him and cared for him, but they didn't give a shit about him, once he lost his scholarship for football. Back in school there were two students that died. One. Drove his father's old car into a river. It was a rainy night and the tires were worn out. BTW, he was too young to drive a car, he had no license. Two. S none of us knew nor suspected, but he had a history of depression and a weird family dynamic. Then his GF broke up with him, and that was the end for him. Then in college there was a guy who died. His father lost his job, didn't have the guts to tell his family that he lost his job, and got his family in debt, without their knowledge. After that, his father still didn't have the guts to tell his family what was going on, so he decided to commit S instead and he decided to take his favorite kid, my classmate, with him. It makes no sense to anyone, but the father literally killed his son because he didn't want to die alone, when he committed S.